Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this Rest and Worship Saturday. Happy Sabbath. And my name is Sheila Rollins and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc. And on this YouTube, we are Overcomers Anonymous, where we support anyone designed to overcome anything. And we do it with Jesus Christ being our higher power and also what he's accomplished for us on the cross. Therefore, our wholeness, our completeness, our cleanliness, those our forgiveness, those things that we thought were impossible becomes possible with Jesus Christ. However, in order for us to get all that he's offering, we need to be obedient to his word. And I encourage the King James Version because it's what he encouraged me. The Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, where he admonishes us to keep the seventh day Sabbath. These things are binding on us for eternal life. And the title or the arrow next to the title, you can find all this information in there. Um, if you want to comment afterwards or just comment, period, just scroll down below the title. And you'll see the word comment. You can comment there. Um, you can say hello. You can leave a topic that you would like for me to like um, explore and then present. Uh, like I said, just say hello. So, okay, so we're on, we're on a series that's entitled Churchianity or Christianity, where I'm comparing my life growing up as a Christian and basically being taught what other people, whether it be parents, teachers, or whoever, downloaded in me what I saw in the church, what I considered as a Christian compared to me studying and learning from the Word of God. So today we have a great topic, and it is dating. Dating. Is the way that we date, is it churchianity or Christianity? Churchianity meaning that business as usual, no changes after being a Christian, or do we submit to God humble ourselves and apply his word. So, churchianity or Christianity. So, okay, so regarding the seventh day Sabbath, it can be found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 8 to 11, where God says to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou should not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. So that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is the seventh day. That's the day of the Lord thy God. That is God's Sabbath. So, okay, um, so happy Sabbath again. And so basically, you know, when, when we think of, of dating, and dating basically is people date for various reasons. So, okay, but to, I should have basically uh, def looked up in the dictionary to find it, but I didn't. But when we think of dating, we think of like coupling, like people going out, in some kind of way to try to get to know one another, okay? Um, and today, we have all kinds of dating, even in the church. We have men with women, men with men. We have women with men and women with women. And don't let me get into the animals and children and people and things, okay? So, let's keep it decent. Okay, so, like I said, you know, so people usually is looking for a few things in the reason and why they're dating, okay? Um, in the description, remember, I'll have some information in there about, you know, what I'm talking about, some scriptures that you can look up. So, okay, so people date for friendships. You know, they're looking for companionship, you know, just looking for somebody to have some fun with, some company, Okay. Other people may be looking for friends with benefits, like they can go out, and then afterwards, they can have a little sex. That's friends with benefits. 
And then still others are looking for a hookup. They may not have a place to stay, knowing that pretty soon they're going to be getting kicked out. And so they're looking for a hookup. They're looking for some place that they can call their own, even though it's yours. They're looking for a place to stay, looking for a car that they can use or whatever. They're looking for a hookup. And these are usually people that, women that are usually on their masculine side that feels like she can do everything that a man can do, okay? Or even men that's on his feminine side where, um, you know, he's looking for a woman to take care of her. When the natural flow of things for a man is to be a provider and to, a, to, to be a priest and a protector of the woman and family. But when he's on his female side, he could just come in with a woman and live with her and what God has provided for her. And the woman, oh, a lot of times she may be able to do a lot of things, but yet on the psychological level may feel like she's nothing or nobody without a man. So she can take on a man that don't have a job, don't have Jesus, okay, and have nothing else, okay? But anyway, so then there's still others that um, is, is honestly looking for a mate, you know, so some of them are dating, searching, going out with this person and that person looking to marry. Okay. Uh, some of them looking for situationships. Some people have been say molested or raped by a married person. Notice that I said married person. I didn't say married man or married woman because Perverses can become, can become, can come in male or female. Doesn't matter. Okay. So they're looking for a situationship. You know, they don't feel right unless they're involved with somebody who already has somebody. Okay. And so basically, um, when I look at these people based on what I know now, because now it's like when we come to Jesus. Um, and the way that Jesus does partnering, we have to look at what he did for Adam and Eve. He caused Adam to fall into a deep sleep. He took the rib and he created Eve. So that was a man and a woman together. And then he brought them together to marry them. Adam, right away, he recognized who Eve was. Okay. And then God blessed them with a marriage as a couple and ask them to multiply and, you know, to have children, everything. And that meant to have sex. Okay. Um, and then we have some other people, like, like these are marriages that God ordained. Like, these people, some of them didn't even look for their mate themselves. For example, in the case of Isaac, Abraham sent out his servant and asked him after his wife died, after Sarah died, Ask the servant to go out and get a wife for his son Isaac. Now, according to the Bible, Isaac was 40 years old, and yet his father was looking for a wife for him. So the servant goes out. Well, Abraham had the servant put his hand underneath for his thigh and promise him, don't you bring back no heathen woman for my son. Don't you dare bring back an unbeliever. So God wants us as Christians to be with unbelievers. So all the stuff that I talked about prior to now, like different ways that people are looking to hook up. When we come to Jesus and we humble ourselves, he heals all of that. And he puts us in a right mind, such as he did for Eve. Uh, I'm sorry, for Mary. When the angel came to Mary, he said, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed are the fruit of thy womb. Okay? So Mary was a virgin. And so the, the, the angel's telling her, you're, you're going to have a baby. The Holy Spirit's going to come. He said, but I never have sex. I'm going to have a baby. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you, you know, and bless you with a child. And so um, Mary accepted but then she was a spouse to Joseph. And so when Joseph found out he was a Mary, that she was pregnant, he being a just man, 
He wanted to put her away privately. He, he, he didn't want to make a, a, a public spectacle out of her. He want, and he loved her. He wanted to put her away privately. But God came to him in a dream and said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. What's in him, what's in her is of me. Okay, so we know that Joseph took Mary as his wife amid all the reproach because people talked, okay? Trust me. And back in that time, women were stoned when they were pregnant or caught having in that predicament that Mary was, but God protected her, okay? So, so we know that that was a marriage that was ordained by God. Um, and then it was a... Uh, Moses and Zipporah. Now, Moses being raised up in uh, with the Egyptians, knowing their language, you know, accustomed to their culture and everything, he refused. He refused to be, um, you know, to enjoy the joys or whatever of the Egyptians. You know, he chose to suffer, you know, to suffer with the people of God and to do things God's way. And so he, you know, to like to prove where he was, okay, he saw an Egyptian um, mistreating an Israelite and he killed the Egyptian. He thought nobody, he looked around, he thought nobody was, was had seen him. And so he killed the Egyptian. Now, later he saw two Israelites who he was standing up for who did not understand, you know, what Moses was trying to do. They just knew that he was with the Egyptians, okay? But Moses had denounced everything that he had learned in the past. So everything that we had learned about situationships and friends with benefits and hookups and searching for our old men, we got to denounce that. Like the Bible says, to let the mind that's in Christ be also in us, that Christ thought it not robbery to be equal to God and to be obedient even unto death and also to resist and to great drops of blood was coming from his brow. Okay. And so we need to resist and humble ourselves, you know, like if we have to, until blood is coming from our bodies. Okay. Um, so uh, so when it came to Moses, let me get back to that. When Aaron, his brother, and Miriam, his sister, found out that Moses was married to an Ethiopian woman whose name was Zipporah from Midian, oh, they were ready to take over the children, take over their leadership and everything. And God caused Miriam to turn into a leper. Then later she repented. Mo Aaron repented and God healed her. But there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, situationships, friends with benefits, looking for our own partners, searching out our own mate. Because see, first of all, the Bible says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. So no matter what we see on the outside, God knows the person on the inside and the outside, okay? So it's only God that can give us the right mate if we so desire, okay? The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord above, okay? So, so I'm asking you, is the dating the way that we know it is? Is that churchianity or is it Christianity? When it happens in the church like that, it's churchianity, you know, um, God wants us to humble ourselves before him, to be obedient to him and let the mind that's in Christ be in us that, you know, he will, we will, um, he will teach us all things. He will be with us. He would never leave us. Okay. He would lead us and guide us. 
you know. And so we need to put our trust back in God, be healed from the experience that we went through so that when God brings a mate, that we can have a happy marriage and not a sick one because while we desire somebody whole and healthy, we ourselves was not whole and happy. Okay, so let us move on, move forward, and to search God's word and with everything within us, endeavor to follow God all the way, no matter where it leads us. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube.